TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli security forces captured two terrorists who committed a deadly shooting attack at the entrance to the town of Ariel. The Israeli intelligence agency reportedly foils an Iranian assassination plot directed at an Israeli diplomat in Ankara, a journalist in France, and an American general in Germany. Tensions between Moscow and Jerusalem are evidently on the rise. This after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov insinuated that the apparent Nazi leader Adolf Hitler had in fact Jewish ancestry. A deadly terror attack plagued Israel's Samaria district over the weekend. Two Palestinian terrorists drove a vehicle to the Israeli town of Ariel late Friday night. Upon arrival to the community's entrance, the two terrorists purportedly drew their makeshift Carlo machine guns and opened fire into a stationary security checkpoint where two civilian guards were stationed. Subsequently, the terrorists disembarked from their vehicle and engaged the security personnel with clear intent of murdering both the Israeli guards. Nevertheless, one of the guards who sustained severe injuries was said to have sacrificed his life to protect the other security guard who, as consequence, did not sustain physical wounds. Meanwhile, the terrorists flee the scene of the attack into a nearby Palestinian village. Consequently, a variety of special operations units were deployed to the sector and an extensive manhunt was launched to apprehend the terrorists. קפצנו למרחב אריאל, לאחר הדיווח על הפיגוע בשעות האחרונות. אנחנו פה יחד עם הרבה כוחות ממגוון יחידות. משוכנע שנסגור מעגל על המחבלים ונעשה כל מה שדרוש להחזרת השקט במרחב. The manhunt after the two terrorists included special operations troops from the Israel security agency Shin Bet, the IDF, and the Israel police counterterrorism unit Yamam. And while the terrorists sought to avoid capture by burning their vehicle and fleeing by foot, within a number of hours, the Israeli troops located and apprehended both terrorists alive in the nearby town of Karawat Banei Hassan in the Salfit region. לפני זמן קצר סיימנו את המרדף אחרי שני המחבלים שביצעו את הפיגוע הקשה אתמול בלילה בכניסה לעיר אריאל. במהלך היממה האחרונה פעלו אלפים רבים מאנשי כוחות הביטחון, צה"ל, משטרה ושב"כ על מנת ללכוד אותם ולהחזיר את השקט למרחב. נמשיך לרדוף ולסכל כל מי שבוחר בדרך של טרור ופגיעה באזרחינו ונבוא איתו חשבון בכל מקום וזמן. After the family of the murdered security guard was informed, the victim of the heinous terror attack was identified as 23-year-old Vesislav Golev, who was engaged to the second security guard, whose life he had saved. Meanwhile, in remarks made at the weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett stressed the sensitivity of the week ahead which is a continuous reminder of the unyielding struggle of the Jewish state for its right to exist. בן ה-23. ויאצ'סלב נרצח בזמן שהגן בגופו על ארוסתו שהבטחה איתו את המחסום של העיר והוא הציל את חייה. הזוג המקסים הזה רק החל את חייו יחד. הלב נשבר. Prime Minister Bennett continued by highlighting the necessity to stand behind Israel's security establishment which works day and night to guarantee the security of Israel's civilians and the sovereignty of the state. גל הטרור הזה מחייב את מערכת הביטחון כולה להימתח עד הקצה. אני מבקש בשם כולנו, כל שרי ממשלת ישראל, להודות ולגבות שוב את צה"ל, השב"כ, המשטרה ואת העומדים בראש הארגונים. 
מדובר על אנשים שכבר שבועות ארוכים כמעט ולא רואים בית, בקו התפר, בירושלים, בג'נין, בצפון, בדרום. עליהם, עלינו, מוטלת המשימה לנצח גם את הגל הזה. ועלינו, ממשלת ישראל ואזרחי ישראל, החובה להכיר לכם תודה, לגבות אתכם ולתת לכם את כל התמיכה והכלים להצליח. Meanwhile, in southern Israel, Defense Minister Benny Gantz addressed a special commemoration event of the IDF Southern Command for the fallen troops of Israel's War of Independence, during which he seized the opportunity to voice his condolences for the victims of this weekend's heinous terror attack, pledging further to act with unrelenting resolve against those who seek to target Israeli civilians. בימים המאתגרים האלו מול מי שמבקשים לאיים על אזרחי ישראל. אנחנו עושים זאת בעוצמה צבאית, התקפת, התקפית והגנתית. פועלים באופן ממוקד בכדי לכדוע, לגדוע את הטרור בכל מקום, בכל שעה ומול כל מי שמחולל אותו. ואנו פועלים בעוצמות שארגוני הטרור לא הכירו בעבר עוצמות שילכו ויגברו בכל פעם שינסו אותנו מול כל מי שיעשה זאת. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to stress that civilians of the Gaza Strip, West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, Lebanon, Syria, or even Iran are not enemies of the state of Israel. Rather, the enemies of the Jewish state are those same oppressive regimes and terror entities which aspire to harm Israeli civilians. Following a security situation assessment, and in light of this weekend's act of terror, the Israeli Defense Ministry decided to impose a full closure on the West Bank and Gaza Strip ahead of Israel's Memorial and Independence Days. As such, the closure will begin tomorrow at 3 in the afternoon and will be lifted on Thursday at midnight. In other news, the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad reportedly thwarted an assassination attempt against an Israeli diplomat in the Turkish capital in Ankara. A senior official confirmed that the Mossad had operated inside Iran approximately six months ago and arrested a member of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force, who had been dispatched to murder the Israeli diplomat. The person was evidently also tasked with assassinating an American general in Germany and a journalist in France. The Iranian assassin Mansour Rasouli was interrogated and released and is currently located in a European country. During his interrogation, the Iranian Quds Force agent admitted to receiving $150,000 for the purpose of preparing for the operation and further acknowledged that he had been promised an additional $1 million if he successfully carried out the assassination. Meanwhile, Iran has vehemently rejected the report about the fact that the Mossad detained and questioned a Revolutionary Guards agent on Iranian soil. Seemingly caught off guard by the event taking place on Iranian soil, the IRGC described those reports as a clumsy lie that was designed to help the desperate Israeli government, which is afraid of being humiliated. The denial was reported by Nur News, a website that is affiliated with the Islamic Republic's Supreme National Security Council. In other news, tensions between Moscow and Jerusalem are evidently on the rise. This after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov insinuated that the abhorrent Nazi leader Adolf Hitler had in fact Jewish ancestry. These remarks were made in an interview with Italy's Red 4 channel, during which Moscow's top diplomat was asked how could Russia claim that it needed to denazify Ukraine when the country's president, Vladimir Zelensky, was Jewish. Lavrov responded, quote, when they say, what sort of Nazification is this if we are Jews? What I think that Hitler also had Jewish origins, so it means nothing. Lavrov continued by asserting, quote, For a long time now we've been hearing the wise Jewish people say that the biggest anti-Semites are the Jews themselves. Meanwhile, Lavrov's remarks naturally infuriated the leadership in Jerusalem, dubbing it 
a preposterous and unforgivable remark. האמירה של שר החוץ סרגי לברוב היא שערורייה בלתי נסלחת. היטלר לא היה ממוצא יהודי, והיהודים לא הרגו את עצמם בשואה. אנחנו עושים כל מאמץ לשמור על יחסים טובים עם רוסיה, אבל יש גבול, והגבול הזה הפעם נחצה. ממשלת רוסיה צריכה להתנצל בפנינו ובפני העם היהודי. The chairman of Yad Vashem's Holocaust Memorial Museum protested the blatant and deceptive notion. Uh, he's basically engaging in Holocaust inversion, making the victims of the Holocaust the perpetrators, and uh, that is inexcusable. Also, his use of uh, Nazi uh, terminology regarding the Ukrainian government and President Zelensky particularly is also a denigration of the term is an offense, an affront to the victims of the real Nazism. If this is Nazism, so it seems to be not so terrible. But Nazism was the worst extermination machine uh, that uh, ever existed in humanity. And uh, the Holocaust should be kept completely apart from uh, propaganda in this war. Thank you for joining us. I would like to encourage you to persist with prayer for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Yair Pinto wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.